Random acts of murder are usually the hardest cases to solve. And that's probably why this case is still searching for its answers. Hello, true crimers. This is the case of Jason McCullough. Viewer discretion is advised. Sorry if you can hear those digging sounds in the background. That is my dog, Roxy. She's trying to break her way out of this joint. 19-year-old Jason McCullough lived in the Dartmouth area of Nova Scotia in Canada. He was described as the sweetest guy you could have ever possibly met. He would give you the shirt off his back, and the person said the reason why they know that is because he literally did that um, for someone. I guess Jason and his family lived in a duplex um, and then actually just below them or above them um, were like other family members like cousins and aunts and uncles and stuff. So it is, this was like a really close family. Jason was described as being just a super down to earth guy, even for being someone who was, you know, young, a teenager, uh, seemed, seemed very mature, very poised for such a young person. They said that even if Jason was in like the worst mood or he had just gotten some bad news, he still always managed to put a smile on his face and make sure everyone knew he was okay for the most part. Jason was a chief scout for, for uh, Scouts Canada. He volunteered at the Boys and Girls Club in Dartmouth. And apparently it's, it's there where he got the nickname Piglet for whatever reason, uh, but I guess that's just what everyone started to call him was Piglet. Jason was a huge fan of R&B. He just loved music in general. He was a graduate from Dartmouth High School. He had just been accepted to St. Mary's and Dalhousie University. He thought about possibly joining the Navy at one point. He just wanted to do anything that would like help others. He was working at a gas station at the time of this case. He was like someone who thrived, I think obviously in customer service. He had just turned 19 on July 9th, 1999, and sadly, he didn't know it, but it would be the last time he ever celebrated a birthday. About a month and a half or so later after his birthday, it was August 28th, 1999, Jason was over at a friend's house. They were just hanging out, chatting, you know, just, just shooting the breeze. Uh, this is also in the Dartmouth area of Nova Scotia. I guess it's on uh, Joseph Young Street. And then at some point that night, Jason decided he was ready to head home. It was just a little after one o'clock in the morning and his home was about one kilometer away from where the party was, which is like a little over half a mile away. Jason frequented this friend's house and he also frequently would walk back to his home. He made this walk a bunch of times and he usually almost always took a shortcut. I guess he lived over on Russell Street or Avenue, but the shortcut would take him through Highfield Park, which is basically, I guess, um, a playground for kids to play on, but it connected Joseph Street to Pinecrest Drive. It's not a secret path. It's not like a well-hidden thing. It's a, it's a, it's a pathway, like it's a, a, a pre-built pathway that many people used. So like I said, he left sometime after 1 a.m. They weren't really exactly sure when, but at approximately 1.30 a.m., there was a gunshot that rang out that everyone at Jason's friend's apartment or house, they all heard it. Uh, as a matter of fact, several people in that area heard the gunshot. They also heard the sounds of multiple footsteps, like running away fast. So multiple people call the police after they hear the gunshot. It's now approximately 2.30 in the morning. Um, again, these are like rough estimates of time frames. It could have been a shorter window of time, but these are just, you know, heat of the moment times that people don't really exactly know precisely when, but... At about 2.30 a.m., police arrive um, in that Highfield Park area, and specifically he was found on Pinecrest Drive, I guess between 100 and 104. This was literally just blocks from his house, but the body was that of Jason McCullough. Jason appeared to have been shot point-blank range through the back of his head. It appeared to be a single gunshot wound. Nothing appeared to have been stolen off of him, but they weren't exactly sure 
if he even had anything on him to begin with. When police would canvass the area and they're asking witnesses about what they heard, pretty much everyone just heard the gunshots and or they heard the footsteps running away. They didn't hear anything that like an argument. There wasn't like a fight, a screaming match or anything that anyone heard. No one observed anyone in terms of fighting with Jason. It, it just all seemed so incredibly random. Um, his family was notified um, and, and obviously they were just completely grief stricken um, and heartbroken. They were like, they have no idea who could have done this to him. Jason didn't have any enemies. He was just your normal, quiet, kind of shy kid at times, super friendly, never got into fights with anyone. He never got into any kind of trouble. He was never been like arrested. He never broke the law. He was just a good kid. Like, so why would someone do this to him? Some people speculated maybe they thought Jason was somebody else because this had been a mistaken identity situation. It's not exactly uncommon. It's happened before. They had to do their due diligence in terms of the, in the investigation. They confirmed he was not like sexually assaulted by anyone. They checked his bank records. Nothing abnormal had gone through his bank records. And once the family was informed and, and basically they asked, you know, if they think anything was stolen off of him, the family said no. He didn't have anything on him. All of his belongings and wallet and stuff were still at home. So he wasn't sexually assaulted. He wasn't robbed. He was just shot in the back of the head. I mean, did he even see who did it? Did he even know it was coming? Was this just a random act of violence for whatever reason? This was not an area that was like riddled in crime. Uh, however, I guess uh, Nova Scotia was having a bit of an uptick in violent crime at this time, um, while other provinces were seeing kind of more of a decline in crime. Um, but even still, this particular area wasn't considered like bad. Uh, this, this park and this path and everything that Jason was killed on was was traveled by many 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 people this was a very busy like walkway typically i mean not so much that time of night it's usually a lot more quiet but this is a highly populated area i mean there's apartment buildings and houses you know uh, retail places all in this area so like there there were a lot of people who would have heard and possibly seen things so it seemed like an unusual location to commit a brazen murder because of how many people lived in that area, police do believe that someone had to have witnessed this. Someone had to have seen something. But perhaps that person's afraid to come forward. It's not unusual. People would come forward. Uh, and these are people who were just like in that area during that time of the, the morning, I guess you can call it, or late evening. And people would give descriptions of, I guess, men that they saw in the area around the time of the murder. They're not saying or don't know if any of these, if these men that were seen were involved in the murder, just that they were seen in that area. So what basically ends up happening is they end up getting composite drawings made of five different men that were all seen in that area. Um, I guess these were men that were maybe consistently seen by multiple people. Again, they're not being labeled as suspects, but they are being labeled as persons of interest. Maybe these are the people who may have more information about what happened to Jason. It's just, they're just, they're asking for anything. And you know what? Who knows? I mean, maybe the witnesses who said they saw these men, maybe they're describing the other witnesses who saw these men. You know what I mean? Like it may just be this roundabout thing, but you never know. I mean, and so they released the composite drawings of all five of these men who were allegedly seen in the area to, and asking the public if anyone recognizes any of these men, if any of these men are you uh, and you saw something or heard something, please come forward. And so when the images were put out there, uh, three of those men matched the descriptions of people, of three men who had actually robbed a house uh, that same exact night um, on Pinecrest, which is the area where Jason was shot. I guess three of these men were, were actually identified um, and they were actually arrested and charged with the burglary because they had also robbed this house uh, at gunpoint and they were convicted of that crime. 
So police were trying to determine if those men had anything to do with Jason's murder. I'm guessing they ran ballistics on whatever ammunition may have been used to kill Jason compared to the guns that were used in this robbery on that same night. And I'm guessing they didn't find a match because none of those men um, were ever charged with any connection to the Jason McCullough murder. In April of 2005, police say they have a female who is a person of interest. And they said they have got information, credible information, that this woman was at Highfield Park during the time that Jason was murdered. But in terms of who she was, I don't know if police knew her name or they were just looking for a general suspect or person of interest. Uh, but they never released her name and nothing ever came from it. And so every time they get some kind of lead or a tip, they investigate that lead or that tip, it never come, it never pans out to anything. Like I said at the beginning, this is, essentially this was a random act of murder, as far as they could tell. Um, they have no idea if Jason even knew the person who shot him. Um, they don't even know if, they, if Jason saw the killer coming. It could have literally just been someone walked by, pulled the trigger and killed him and then ran away for no reason whatsoever. It's frightening, but it happens. But that makes it that much more difficult to solve when you can't when you can't bridge a connection to anyone in Jason's life that could be someone who may be a suspect. When there is no connections like that, when there is no uh, past criminal history with the the victim, when you can't link any um, relationships that had a, a tumultuous ending no jilted lovers or anything like that, when they can't match any coworkers who had a grudge against them, when that doesn't exist, there's no one to look at. And that's where they're at. There's no one to look at. And if this was a random person who just walked up and shot them, it's gonna take almost a miracle to find out who it was, unless that person comes forward. But we all know killers talk. They love to talk. Uh, they love to brag about things they've done. Not all the time, but it happens a lot. And so there's a very good chance the person who killed Jason McCullough may have told someone. And that someone may be you watching this video as we speak. And if that is you and you have information, even if that isn't you, if you have information on the murder of Jason McCullough, you, you need to come forward. You need to give this family the answers they they deserve that they should have had years ago you know they lay jason to rest but he isn't resting peacefully you know his family certainly isn't at peace they want justice for their son they deserve justice for their son jason deserves justice who shot him in the back of the head it's a simple question but the answer unfortunately is extremely difficult it's been over 20 years, but his killer is likely still out there. His parents are, are fighting still tooth and nail to get this story out there so that it's not forgotten. Um, you know, you can't forget about these types of cases, even if it's two decades later. Uh, you know, it's, it's still fresh in their minds. It's like it happened yesterday for them. But there's a killer out there. Right? There's a killer who is responsible for ending this young man's life. We gotta bring him to justice somehow, some way. They ended up uh, dedicating a portion of the park or the park itself to Jason McCullough. They also do annual walks against violence, which in part they honor to Jason McCullough. There is currently a $150,000 reward for any information that leads to the capture of Jason McCullough's killer. So if you're someone who can't come forward for moral reasons and you need money to inspire you, which is terrible, but it is what it is, uh, there's a reward, all right? So there you go. If you have any information about the murder of Jason McCullough, please call the Crime Stoppers at 1-800-222-TIPS or 1-800-222-8477. You can also submit your tip to www.crimestoppers.ns.ca. All of these tips you can report anonymously. You don't have to say who you are, and so you, you, can, you can stay safe. 
Again, the murder happened on August 28th, 1999, somewhere in Highfield Park off of Pinecrest. Someone knows something. Please come forward. But that is it for this case, True Crime Maroonies. I hope you found it interesting. As usual, if you have tripped, fallen, and stumbled your way into this video, hello, I'm Mike. I tell true crime stories. Uh, I tell them here, also over on TikTok. So please subscribe to me here. The link to my TikTok is in the link tree in the description below if you want to follow me there as well. Next, uh, if you want me to cover a case, uh, please email me the information. Just email me the name of the person, where it happened, and when it happened, and I will eventually add it to my list. I pick my cases that I cover at random, so I will cover it eventually. I just can't tell you when. Next, if you want to support me in any way, we do sell merch, uh, t-shirts, hoodies, wine glass, stuff like that, and we ship internationally. So please feel free to do that if you want. Also linked in the link tree below. And then lastly, if you have Discord and you want to join my Discord server, uh, also in the link tree below in the description, uh, please be over the age of 18 or else you will be kicked out. So yeah. But that is it for this video, true crime aroonies. That was provocative. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. I don't even know what, what does provocative mean? Molly, what does provocative mean? Molly's flipping me off. Molly, Jesus. What? What is a girl? What? Jimbo? He fell in the well? Well, that's Jimbo's problem. I'm gonna go save him. <laughs> well, it sounds like it's a him problem. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? <clears throat> go save him. Go save him. What? Molly just flipped me the bird, the double bird again. <laughs> I guess goodbye, I guess.